Well, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here in the San Francisco Bay Area and the beautiful campus of St. Mary's College here in Moraga is the site. The McKee Pavilion, the scene of an age-old rivalry. It's the St. Mary's Gales and the Santa Clara Broncos. Each team coming in 12 up and 12 down. And hello again, everybody. Barry Tompkins along with Dan Belwamini. And Dan, these two teams hook up and the philosophy of these two coaches, physical game. Inconsistency has been the problem, if any, for these two teams. Looking to get a little bit of that today. Yeah, looking really to pick up some momentum. Both clubs coming off a loss, but I think it's going to be a hard-fought game inside especially. You look at the standings in the West Coast Conference, Barry, you see Gonzaga right at the top of San Diego. By the way, San Diego's been playing tremendous basketball. You look at St. Mary's trying to move up to that first division. Don't forget, if you get to the first division in the West Coast Conference, all of a sudden you've got to buy in the first round of the tournament. That's coming up soon. Yeah, I like that kind of that match. Up. And remember, Gonzaga and San Diego will play essentially for the conference championship next week. It's been a very competitive conference this year. St. Mary's, though, I think really doing an excellent job. And Randy Bennett reached down. Ought to go all the way to Australia. He found himself a real prize. Yeah, and he got himself a good one in Daniel Kickard. And here's a guy, a freshman at about 6'9", 6'9 and a half. You see he leads freshman scoring in the West Coast Conference. He's big, he's agile, he can shoot outside, and I think here's a guy that's a definite in terms of an all-conference selection in future years. What about Jim Howell for Santa Clara now? This is a guy that, he's a throwback player. He could have played for this team 25 years ago. Yeah, you look at Howell, what does he bring to the table? Hard worker, scorer inside, rebounder, does all the dirty work, a very effective player, and certainly we saw him a week ago against Pepperdine, did quite a bit of damage inside. So you like what Howell brings to the table. You like what Howell can do. Santa Clara has to get some consistency from the perimeter this afternoon. Now, I like this matchup, though. These are two coaches that have a very similar philosophy. That is hard nose in your face, physical kind of basketball. That's what we're looking for today. Should be played in the 50s or 60s, I would have to think. Might all come down to whoever rebounds best is going to win the ball game. The Broncos and the Gales after this. We welcome you back to the McKeon Pavilion here in Moraga, just about set to go between Santa Clara and St. Mary's. It is Seniors Day, and uh, they are just finishing introducing the St. Mary's Seniors, and there are four of them on this uh, on this team, but a very young team that Randy Bennett has assembled here and uh, got out of the blocks very quickly, Dan. I thought uh, played superbly early in the year. We're competitive in just about every game, and kind of have hit the wall a little bit, but uh, still trying to regear things and make a little noise in the tournament. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what you want to do, and that's what you're playing for. You, you, you want to obviously finish the year strong, but St. Mary's hoping to get into that upper division. It's not going to be easy for them to do it, but a pivotal game here this afternoon. Santa Clara not having their typical year, and certainly injuries have been a problem uh, for the Broncos. I think if Kyle Bailey were healthy for Santa Clara, uh, they would be obviously in much better shape than they are, but it should be a very entertaining game this afternoon in the West Coast Conference. Great rivalry game. The first one, Barry, was a three-point game uh, at the, down at Santa Clara, so I look for this one to be very close also. Yeah, I feel exactly the same way. Before we get to the opening tip-off and meet the lineups, let's uh, meet the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Mark Q. Jones. Mark? Coach, big game tonight against your close rival, Santa Clara. A lot of love over the years between these two teams. Love or hate, I don't know which way you want to take it, but yeah, it's a big rivalry. It's a good good game for college basketball, nice atmosphere, but it's a, it's a fun game. Coach, how physical is it going to be tonight? Both of you guys play a physical style. What are we going to see out there? Probably pretty physical. <laughs> <laughs> I know they'll make it physical, so we need to match it, but yeah, that's a, a rebound should be a lot of bodies collide. Coach, thanks a lot. Good thanks luck. a lot. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Mark. Well, Randy Bennett, I think, really has got it going here. He started, remember, took over a team that was 2-26. and 26. Last year, they won nine games, and that was a successful season. This year, they're at 12-12, and 12, a good chance of a plus 500 record, and uh, he's got things headed in the right direction. Well, he does it, and you build it around the guy that we talked about at the top of the show. You build it around Daniel Kicker. You know, you get a 6'10 guy that comes in that's very effective, that's a, a good scorer now. You know, you, you've got a, a building block for the future. Cape Horn has been a very effective player. And uh, Randy, you know, he was uh, he, he's really served his dues. He's a guy that uh, uh, served under Lorenzo Romar at St. Louis and at Pepperdine and, of course, was uh, also at San Diego. Let's take a look at the lineups. Uh, first of all, for uh, the visitors 
from Santa Clara, and uh, they will change their lineup as uh, Coach Dick Davey has been wont to do. Jim Howell, about whom we spoke, gets the start. Uh, Leggy getting a start. He had been a starter before. J.R. Patrick gets a start. Rhodey, three-point shooter, an all-timer who is just now rounding into form. He was not available to this team until the start of the conference season. Those will be the starters for Dick Davey. Uh, Dick Davey, of course, uh, I, I'm telling you, he's doing it with mirrors this year, I yeah. think. Well, Dick does it with mirrors almost every year, but this year the, the injuries have been a problem, and you see Dick, the dean of the West Coast Conference co coaches is an 11th season and really a terrific all-around guy and, and, and a great basketball coach. And you saw the lineups uh, for St. Mary's as they will go with uh, Kickert, Poole, Woodards, and then, of course, Bill Ania, who is the senior, getting a start today as well. Randy Bennett uh, now in his third year, and now it is his program, and he's going to be better as, as it goes on. I think he's done very well to be where he is right now, and uh, with the freshman being the center point of his team, both physically and literally, uh, literally the center point of his team, he's going to be very good. There you saw the series history, and here the uh, final huddle for St. Mary's. St. Mary's, uh, I think, is the type of team that once they get to the tournament in San Diego, if they got on a roll, they could be trouble. Yeah, they, they could be trouble, and uh, and certainly you can say that uh, in, in terms of balance in the West Coast Conference. Right now, I know Gonzaga, San Diego, probably playing the best basketball in the conference. USF has had a nice surge after a slow start. So those three schools playing playing exceptional basketball. But I think St. Mary's dangerous, and, and they're a club. If they can get a win today, back to 500 in the conference, and then you try to finish strong the last couple of games and uh, let the chips fall. One thing that uh, does hurt Randy Bennett's Gales is that uh, they lost Ross Benson, who was their second best post player. He was out uh, with a knee sprain and will not return this year. And uh, that puts just that much more pressure on kicker. And there is Benson right there. And he's still uh, got a pretty good hitch in his giddy up when he was introduced as one of the seniors. So Jim Howell will try to uh, lead his team. You can see he's got that three-day growth. He's got 10 o'clock shadow at uh, <laughs> 5 in the afternoon. Or 5 o'clock shadow at 10 in the morning, whichever way it goes. <laughs> I'll get all these things right. Last time these two teams hooked up, Santa Clara wins it by three. St. Mary's with 19 turnovers. They'd like to uh, improve on that number a little bit if they can. Let's see what the Gales do. The, the first defensive sequence looks like man-to-man -man by St. Mary's. And you know Santa Clara likes to run their motion. Start with the back door. It doesn't work. But that's what the Broncos like to do. Movement, get it inside, and, and, and try to react to the overplays. Woodard got a hand on that ball. Santa Clara will retain possession. Both teams will try to use the shot clock. Howell down low and he draws a crowd, took the extra step. Well, you know the Gales are prepared for the Broncos' inside game. And that time when you saw Howell get the ball, he, he did a nice job. Uh, St. Mary's did a nice job to try to cover up and double up and cause that turnover. This is Ania. Now kicker it outside. And he can shoot it out there. Drop it down this time for Aju Ajuanu, and uh, he can't get it, but Woodard cuts in front, gives this team another chance. Santa Clara man to man. Time trying to take it all the way to the basket was Samuel Saint Jean. I think they may get a foul here. Going to the goal, St. John, a guy that can penetrate off the dribble. And uh, you set that high post screen, and he did a good job to utilize the screen as you see the numbers on St. John. Good look at Randy Bennett. Uh, a contemplative pose. He's been with some good coaches and uh, has learned his trade. Well, he's been with Hank Egan and uh, of course Brad Holland at San Diego and Lorenzo Romar at Pepperdine and St. Louis. 
So you're right. Katie's dues learned his trade. Now he's got an opportunity here at St. Mary's. Done a very nice job. All right, here, here's your little four-man motion, and then try to post up Howell if you find him. All-timer open for three. Got it. Yeah, I think all-timer is, is, is a key guy. We, we saw him a week ago against Pepperdine. Very effective, quick on the dribble. Can be explosive from the outside. So St. Jean will back it out now. This is Woodard. Good hands by Howell. See if he can finish. Oh, good move. Back it out. Patrick. The three, it won't go. And the rebound, Howell fights for it. Olajuwano keeps it alive. Try to lob over the top for Leggy, and we're going to get a foul against Patrick, I think. Davy has juggled his lineup with uh, great consistency, just trying to find the right combination of guys. Dick's team's going to win. They have to overachieve. Right. St. Jean leaves it for Ania. The senior misses his shot. Kicker high for the rebound. Gives St. Mary a second chance. St. Jean got it for three. Uh, multiple chances at the offensive end. Talked about rebounding being a key in this ball game. See, now I would think in, in this game here, Santa Clara, you know, they're a very good rebounding team. They've been consistent at that end of the floor, so better control the glass and don't give the Gales extra shots. Well, they left Rody for three, and he knocks it down. So three-point shooting has been very good on both sides so far. Besides, against that shot. Now Woodard. St. Jim penetrate. Seven on the shot clock. Woodard, kicker, turnaround. Won't go. Howell the rebound. Good defensive job by Santa Clara. Yeah, good positioning by the Broncos that time. See if they can get a little bit of position. Santa Clara had the over the top the last time. That was at all time. It just kind of penetrated. And Woodard's from behind. Fouls it. Barry, remember the last time down, I thought the Broncos' leggy did not have to push off. They're going to bring the ball to this area and go over the top. Leggy's going to establish position right in here, but he does not have to push off. Freeze it there. All he's got to do is hold and go to the goal and he does not do it. Instead, see him push off with his arm? No reason to do that. Just hold position, and you've got an easy lob over the top. All-timer at the line, and he misses his first. And Nia will leave, and Adam Caporn will come into the lineup for Randy Bennett-Scales. And Nia got the start because this is senior day, start of the seniors. All-timer one out of two. Horn, one of two Australians. That's his his pal. It has it now. Kicker. Woodards working on Rody. Kicker is open and he can shoot. Missed that one. Ow. Moving bodies out of there big time. Yeah, yes, he is. And, and you saw Caper, Cape Horn rather with the penetration to give to Kicker. And Kicker can face up or he can play near the goal. Got a tough matchup here. Ow. Baseline. Couldn't finish it. Fight for the rebound and finally. Ajuwano comes down with it. Try to go high low. Not, ooh, Ajuwano looked like he had kicker. He, he did. Just, just didn't take a look at him in there. Now kicker down on the block, worked on by Howell. Backs him down in the turnaround off the baseline. No, low to the rebound. Rody thought about it and passed that three-point yeah. shot up. You, you've got to get it. You've got to get tight on Rody. St. John cannot leave him because Rody's definitely looking for the outside J. Missed that one. Leggy tried to get the rebound. He couldn't do it. Finally, it's Woodard who comes out of the pack with the ball. Woodard switch hands, drives, draw the foul. 
powerful move by, by Woodards that time going to the goal. Did a good job to cross dribble, isolate, and get it high on the glass. Showed some uh, really outstanding quickness. Watch this quick cross dribble right there. And then he takes it in. And, and a lot of guys, and, and you know, the real good players try to use their body in order to protect the ball. And Woodards did, did a very nice job to draw the foul. Woodards can't get the first one. Woodard's really more known as a defensive specialist, and I think you got a little taste of that so far today. Substitutions now for both teams. Neeson and Rowey come in for Santa Clara. Chase Poole and Sanders come into the lineup for St. Mary's. One out of two for Woodard's. And we'll take a timeout with 15.09 remaining to be played in the first half. It's a 7 to 5 ball game. Santa Clara leading St. Mary's. 7 to 5 ball game. 15.09 remaining first half. Santa Clara over St. Mary's. West Coast Conference fans can get all the latest league news and scores by logging on to WCC website at WCCSports.com. The site services one stop shopping for everything from exclusive WCC merchandise to up to date information on all eight schools. Go to WCCSports.com today for all your important West Coast Conference news. Neither team, interestingly enough, has made a two point shot in this game. That will emphasize the importance of the three. It does emphasize that, and both teams, you know, they rely on the inside game, especially the Broncos. So uh, they cannot just shoot it on the perimeter. How's the guy that has to come up big? Good defense that time by the Gales. Travel. Third turnover for Santa Clara. This is Sanders. Sanders was a top recruit, went to Colorado State, transferred to St. Mary's, and is, is just now getting a feel for basketball at this level in this conference. Yeah, coming off a good game against uh, San Diego. And had, had a decent game of 14 points, so Sanders is a guy that uh, is uh, quick and agile and uh, can make things happen. Come to the second foul on Altimer. He will leave. Cargo will come on. This is Cape Horn. He was open for a moment, but he took the extra step. Yeah, Cape Horn, a, a lot of players that, that uh, don't, don't play their high school basketball here in the U.S., they have that tendency sometimes you know, to use that quick stutter, and then you, you don't put the ball on the ground. You're moving both feet at the same time. you got to make sure you get that out of your repertoire because definite walking. You're going to get an offensive foul this time on Cargo. They say he got him as he went by with the elbow. and John got right by Carbo and scores off the window. Not nice job by St. John that time. Excellent dribble penetration and good spacing by the Gale. Opened up the floor, gave St. John that ability to go ahead and utilize his dribble. Ajuano's doing a good defensive job on Neeson inside. Then look at Ajuano, 50, moves Neeson away from the goal. A little bit uh, more difficult of a shot, and again, good position, just holding, establishing, and the official, I thought, makes a good call there, bumping back in. I thought so, too. Neeson got him with the elbow, I think, backing him down. Yeah, remember St. St. John the last time down the floor, and they opened up that side of the floor for him, and he utilizes his quickness. Nice to see him use the glass. Very high percentage shot there on the side using the square. Both Sanders both right over Neeson. Offensive. Yeah. Yep, offensive, yes, offensive. Good call. Definitely a good move. Well, Neeson comes off the bench and quickly picks up two fouls. Well, watch Neeson, 41, get right in the way and, and get his head, his chest, and he's saying, well, what's the call? What's the call? 
And I think the officials have to get together on that one. Right. And I said that was second foul on Neeson. That's wrong, of course. Neeson drew the foul. Early turnovers you see. Santa Clara with five. St. Mary's with three. Carbo steps in. Good job by Sanjin. Patrick missed the layup. This is Sanders coming the other way. With the left hand too hard. Follow misses by Poole, I believe it was. And finally, Sanders runs down a long rebound. Under the out of bounds to St. Mary's. Anderson coming into the Santa Clara lineup. That is Brad Anderson, his brother. Twin brother Cord also on his team and a quick turno turnover off the inbounds pass. And Howell has not gotten off to the kind of start I'm sure that Dick Davey would like. He's being defended extremely well by the Gales, comes out of the game. St. Mary's playing very good interior defense. Look at Poole play right over the top. Not easy to get it in there. Cargo. Ajuano, I thought, did enough. He goes down hard, but St. John controls it for St. Mary's. Ajuano, a little out of control, but he did draw the foul, yeah. and this time it will be the second foul on Neeson. Well, you got to say this for a guy 6'8", six, 6'9", six, I mean, he, he has a little uh, dexterity. Watch uh, Ajuano and going left, able to put it on the ground, and Neeson a little bit late there, actually had good position, but the foul occurred before Neeson was uh, in position to accept the charge. So it will put Ajuano at the free throw line. Ajuano, 68% free throw shooter. Andy Bennett has put together an international squad. Two, sure players, two players from France, two players from Australia. All he needs is Yao Ming at the post. That's right. <laughs> you That's can't, right. You can't get You'd him. You have the United Nations. Yeah, the United, you can't get him, though. He's... He's, he's moved on, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Big time. Kicker will come into the lineup now, and St. John will leave. Also into the St. Mary's lineup, Tyler Herr. And, and we know Tyler Herr is, is a young man that, that is a terrific perimeter player. So you've got to be alert if you're Santa Clara, because if he gets on a streak, he, he can make quite a few threes. This is Rowey. Rowey coming off a tough shooting night at USF and a grab on Cape Horn. And we'll get a timeout with 11.51 remaining to be played. It's a 9-7 ball game. St. Mary's over Santa Clara. Each team waiting for the other. Welcome back. 11.51 left first half. Santa Clara's been on seven for five minutes and yet they've only given up five points so it's a nine to seven ball game with 11 51 remaining let's go to mark jones right now for a quick update mark hey you know in recruiting it's all about connections and coach randy bennett's got him he's got the french connection bringing in bringing in samuel st john and frederick aduanu and he's also went down under and got the big fella daniel kicker and his buddy adam caporn they say that four of their top seven players are from overseas thanks fellas thanks mark well, the interesting thing is, I think really it was Cape Horn who went down and got kicker. They yeah. were pals. Yeah, they were pals, and, uh, and uh, of course, Cape, Hurt, uh, Cape Horn, rather, is a year older. And not, you know, you get one guy, and, and all of a sudden you open up the doors, and, and you might get somebody else. Long through that time by kicker. And here comes Roy for Santa Clara. You get a long dry spell for Santa Clara here. Down low, Anderson, he can't finish. Neeson tries, that'll be a jump ball call. Possession arrow, St. Mary's. Actually, that, that was good execution by, by the Broncos. Uh, yeah, you get Rowey using the screen and trying to get it inside to Anderson. You had a good shot, you just didn't finish. Sanders outside with Patrick on him. Drop this one down for Kicker over Patrick. See, I, I like that high to low. Yeah, Kicker did a nice job to establish position. Up, 
They had Neeson for a moment there, but passed him up. Rowey puts it on the floor, trying to go back door to Patrick. Couldn't do it. Patrick scrambling for the loose ball. Capehorn on the floor with him, but it's picked up by Anderson. Santa Clara will reset. Now whistles blow. Got to get a reset on a kick. Remember the last time down, Barry, how do you get Kickert going? Well, Kickert is right here. He's going to stab it. Utilize your dribble. Give it to the big guy inside and see if he can make something happen. Look at this. They're playing right behind him. He does a beautiful job to get it up on the glass to finalize. That's how you get guys going if they're not shooting it on the outside. And the guy playing behind him is 6'4". There's a nice finish by Anderson, and that gets St. Mary's off about a six-and-a-half minute no scoring run. Well, you might want to go to go to that again. And now, now they look, look at uh, Kicker trying to post up again. Here's the guy you were talking about. Her for free. And if he gets started, that's a real problem for Santa Clara. And he's a guy that in early offense, when you're coming down the floor, you might want to try to look at him quickly coming off a screen or setting him up for an outside shot. Neeson. And let's see which way they're going to call this. I think they're going to get St. Mary's. Here's Tyler Hur. Yeah, Tyler Hur. Watch the screens away from the ball and look at the space he has to set up and get a good look at the goal. So you've got to make a concerted effort to fight through, through those screens and get to her. Look at that three-point field goal percentage at 36%. So you know that that's where he's looking uh, to do his damage when he comes in the game. Off the baseline, Rohde had it halfway down, couldn't finish. Anderson gets the gimme rebound, but he's too far under, and he popped it off the bottom of the rim. Sanders, they left him for a moment. Now he puts it on the floor. Chase Poole, he can shoot it. Missed that one off the front rim, however. A long rebound run down by Sanders and Rohde, and it's going to be out of bounds to Santa Clara. Well, you can see the St. Mary's strategy, Barry. They're now trying to use Kickert as the focal point inside. He did make the one goal. It will open up some outside shots, but instead of putting him away from the basket, they're going to put him near the goal and, and see if he can uh, he can do some damage. But now Howell back at the game, so it'll be a tougher matchup for Kickert because Howell will defend him a little bit stronger uh, on the interior. You can see neither team uh, exactly lighting it up here. That is a result, Barry, as the coaches will tell you, of terrific defense. Well, we said it was going to be a physical game, and that's been as advertised. Although I would say the Broncos have missed some shots inside. Uh, they've had some opportunities to finish. Anderson with a couple and, and could not get him in. All-timer had a pretty good look. Couldn't finish. Kick it high for the rebound. Good rebound by Kicker. Now St. John back in the ball game. A little bit of a war going on in here. Wow. Absolutely. Between Howell and Kicker. Now Howell's going to defend him outside. Her again. Missed everything. Little off. Ajuano gets it back down low, but he loses it to Lowy and a whistle call. Blows and going to get a travel violation against St. Mary's. Going to be Santa Clara ball. Sanders leaves. Woodward, Woodard's rather, comes back for St. Mary's. You know, th this game here is a direct result of two teams struggling. Two teams trying to find their way, trying to get some confidence, and, and they're just trying to find combinations that will work. Both clubs coming off a loss, but I think they'll get it in gear before long. Offensive foul on Roy. Good position taken that time by her. Yeah, Rowey saw an opening, but watch her come all the way from the weak side. Here's your move. Now watch her. Here he comes, and he gets in very good position. And as you said, Rowey out of control there. In college basketball, anytime you take it to the goal, someone's going to find a way to establish position and take a hit. Woodard's tried to drive, cut off, her downtown again, and now Howell the rebound. I think they've got to get Hall, Howell going for the Broncos. 
Uh, we got to find a way to, to get Howell the ball and see if he can uh, if he can at least take it to the basket and be effective. That was Leggy. Now the dish for Rody, and he gets it for three from the corner. Yeah, nice pass by Leggy. St. John, end to end. How about it? All right, now you now you just take it right to the goal. Got a foul away from the ball, way away from the ball. I think they might have gotten kicker. And now we'll take a timeout with 7.29 left. It's a four point ball game. St. Mary's leading Santa Clara 16 to 12. It's been as advertised with a very physical game on both ends. Nice pass that time by Leggy to Rody for the three. 16 to 12 ball game, St. Mary's over Santa Clara, 7.29 remaining in the first half. Right after this game, we're going from the WCC to the ACC. ACC Sunday Night Hoops, it'll be Wake Forest hosting Virginia. Great college basketball right here on Fox Sports Nets. Virginia, by the way, trying to find a way to get into the NCAA tournament. Yeah. You know, they, they've, they've had a few losses, and uh, they need to finish the ACC uh, strong to, to get in. Yeah, they're on the cusp. Yes, they are. All-timer. Look at Woodard's overplay, his right hand. Sure is. He's right on that right hand, and uh, Ajiwana did a good job inside to, to negate that pass to Leggy. Tough shot. Made but it. he got it. He got it. I mean, that, was, that was not easy. I thought he was defended well, but uh, all-timer, a beautiful move to get free. Ajiwana puts it on the floor, cleared out with his elbow. Of course, Santa Clara has the 18 foul. That's a sixth on the Gales. And, and you know if you're Randy Bennett, you're trying to put the ball inside. Let's get to the foul line. You know, we got him in a bit of foul trouble. But uh, Randy's saying, you know what? He's using his elbow to move my guy out. All-timer again, taking it all on his own shoulders. Okay, here's here's the plays from now on. Okay, forget everything we ran in practice. All-timer will get the ball. He'll just dribble, and he'll just shoot. That's it. And everybody else go rebound. It's a simple offense. Yeah, it's simple. Let's just simplify the whole thing. Good play by Patrick. And it's going to be Santa Clara ball. Nice play by Patrick. He just got between the ball and the guy who was going to receive the pass. Yeah, here's Alzheimer who just uh, is really utilizing his individual ability to free up and make shots. And the Broncos haven't been real successful at uh, trying to punch the ball inside and score. So uh, Alzheimer has got the eight points. Rody has six. So that's uh, that's a nice combination. That's 14 from the backcourt. 14 of the 16 that Santa Clara has. Here's a guy they want to get started. Howell faces up too hard. Patrick, good job to keep it alive, and they're going to get Patrick on a grab. I think it's a good call. Yeah, pa Patrick, a little bit overzealous, and, and it's hard to fault him because he's just trying to go after the ball and grab that time. Should be a shooting situation now for the Gales. So Ajuanu will go to the free throw line. Frederick Ajuanu from Ambilly, France. Ajuana will get a one and one opportunity. Ninth team foul on the Broncos. And uh, Ajuana about a 67% free throw shooter. Got a nice rotation on the ball. Real advantage for a big guy to be able to shoot your free throws. Cord Anderson now into the ball game for Santa Clara for the first time. His brother Brad was in earlier. Yeah, just a week ago when we saw the Pepperdine game, Cord was starting. Right. So as I said, Dick Davies trying to find all kinds of combinations. And uh, it's a sure sign if, if you're not winning as many games as, as you think you should be, all, you're gonna you're gonna shuffle a deck to, to find a group uh, that will gel together. Leggy down low, put it on the floor, and then got it up and in. We're tied at 18. So it may not be exactly a symphony, but it's tied. Well, that, that was well executed, I thought, in that half court set. 
Miles Wanda, who steps out, shoots a three. I think Santa Clara will give him that shot all day long. Well, Santa Clara, remember the last time down, did a good job to get it to Leggy inside, and Leggy's well, Alzheimer's is a good option. Just didn't get that one down. And that's cleared by St. John. St. John in the corner to Cape Horn. Now they drop it down to Ajuana from behind. Leggy fouls it. All right, Barry, the last time down, I thought the Broncos really did a nice job to run their guy out here, post up inside. We're going to run it a little bit forward now. All right, now we're going to stop it right here. Look at the space right here to throw the ball. No help on the weak side, and they do a good job. They have it. The help is a little bit late. Leggy, I thought, did a beautiful job just to just to reach back around with his right hand and make that jump hook, which, by the way, is a shot I love for big guys. But Santa Clara executed well. St. Mary's a bit late, and Dick Davey found something on that sequence. Alzheimer leaves now. After being very productive for Dick Davey, Neeson and Rowe come back into the Santa Clara lineup. Ajuana one out of two. It's a one point St. Mary's lead. Body's going right. everywhere. Nice job by Cape Horn. St. Jean all the way to the basket. Now, I'll tell you the other thing. I thought a terrific no call because it would have penalized St. Mary's to make a foul call in that situation. Cape Horn with a brilliant defensive play. The Gales with a run out. Defense keys offense. Ford Anderson. Ford and his brother, of course, from Honolulu. Walking around in Aloha shorts last week. Howell missed that shot. That's one he's not often going to miss. No, you, you don't. You, you don't see Howell uh, doing that very often. Has not got off this afternoon. Hey, here's that steal as Roy just loses the ball, and, and that's what I like—a no call right there. Cape Horn went on the ground to allow uh, uh, St. John to finish that play in the open court. But uh, terrific defense, I thought, by the Gales. The Galloping Gales, as galloping they Gales, once were right. referred to. They were. Yes. Remember the football rivalry, of course. But we do. St. Mary's and Santa Clara. And I can remember, and this clearly is dating ourselves, but 60,000 people at St. John with a three. 60,000 people at Keysar Stadium yeah, for that rivalry. That, that's right. And USF, of course, a part of that also. Yeah, with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, the, that, that was, what, late 40s, early 50s. Well, USF's 1951 football team, arguably the best in college football history. 13 guys playing the NFL off that team. That's not bad. No, not bad at all. St. John, last five points for St. Mary's. That one a three, and his team leads by six. St. Mary's now by six, 357 remaining in the first half. St. Mary's freshman forward Daniel Kickett, one of the top contenders for the league's freshman of the year award. So we thought we'd take a moment to test your knowledge of West Coast Conference basketball. Here's the following question. Who was the last St. Mary's freshman to win West Coast Conference Freshman of the Year honors? Hmm. Hmm. Ponder me that. Ponder. Don't know the answer either. Got to think about that one. And a kicker, the likely candidate this year. They leave Cape Horn. He takes it, misses off the right side, but Poole runs down the long rebound. Long shots, long rebounds. Yeah, long rebounds. Cape Horn was open again in the corner, and they, they love to run that double screen for Cape Horn, see if he can get open. Poole's a guy you might want to look at, 0-0 zero, zero inside. They're playing right behind him, because you've got to find a way to get him the ball. Well, good jump out again by Neeson, wasn't it? Stopped his dribble. Another drop it down to Ajuanu, a nice little turn. And I think that's a comfort area for Ajuano. Give him the ball. Don't put it on the ground much. Go ahead, use, utilize your size, make that turnaround. Santa Clara will play behind you at the post, but you have to go ahead and produce. He's got seven. St. John has 13. That's 20 of the 26 St. Mary's points. And St. Mary's now on an 8-0 run, and they've stretched it to an eight-point lead. Good play by Poole, but they say they're going to get Howell. Howell with the elbow. Yeah, Howell with the elbow, and 
and, and you saw the way the Gales are, are trying to negate that pass to the post, and Dick Davies trying to find a way to get his guys in the flow. It really hasn't happened in the first half, but I think Randy Benestein's played terrific interior defense so far in the first half. Cease and Jen with 13 points, and the rest of the team with 13, and seven of those, Ajuana. Well, I, I we knew he had a good first half. Didn't realize he had not missed a shot. So St. John, maybe be a good idea to <laughs> get the get, ball to him. Yeah, get him the ball again. See what he, well, why not? He's five out of five. Well, okay, he gets one miss. Wow, clears for, for Santa Clara. Santa Clara in a dry spot again here. All timer, nice dish to Patrick, and he missed a shot, but it'll go to the line. Well, you, you saw all timer, and, and that's exactly what he can do. Well, he burned that dribble down the floor. And, and Alzheimer found uh, Patrick inside, who couldn't get it up on the sweet spot that time, but did a good job to, to draw the foul. Well, we said that Alzheimer wasn't available until the first conference game. There was some thought they might redshirt him. He had a fractured foot in the preseason in an exhibition game at the Olympic Club, against the Olympic Club. Yeah, not at, I wouldn't think at the Olympic Club. Right, no, they didn't play they, there. Well, they, yeah, I know their gym seat's about 11. <laughs> it's a standing room only. I can tell you that. <laughs> Ajuana will leave for St. Mary's. Sanders comes back. Good help again by Howell. Is he late? Yeah. Howell is not. He's trying hard. He just... He's, he's been just a tad late a couple of times, the official that time. I thought that's one that could have gone either way. But here, here's the, here, look at the help by Santa Clara. Pop out on the screens and then look at how running over to get position. And I thought a good call. You got to give the man a chance to at least put the ball on the ground and he was late, didn't like the call. Should be a double bonus situation now for, for the Gale. So Sanders at the line coming off a very good offensive game. This is his first. Coming up at halftime, we'll uh, take a look at the West Coast Conference Tournament. It's coming to the Bay Area for the next couple of years. They decided they're going to move it around now. We'll analyze the first half of this one, and uh, Sanders comes up empty. Of course, this year at the, at the Jenny Craig Center in uh, San Diego, which is a beautiful facility, and, of course, they move it. Uh, it goes uh, Santa Clara and then USF, I think, in the next couple of years. So you're right. Now, this is, a, again, a run out. Stop and shoot the jumper. Why not? I mean, he looked automatic on that one. Good idea. Squared up. I think Santa Clara needs a couple of trips down the floor where they can be productive here. I mean, they, they just have not gotten in any kind of a, of a rhythm at all. Again, St. John, he's doing it at both ends. Uh, Alzheimer got in the air and just didn't know what he was going to do with the ball. St. John was right in front of him. Now he drops it down. Nice kick wow. out by Sanders. All but the finish. And Alzheimer with the rebound. Great ball movement. Yeah, Bakary Alzheimer just, just trying to run the show out here. I think he has a tendency to sometimes maybe do a little bit too much, he, he, but he's a guy that's very talented. Well, we've seen a lot of foul away from the ball, a lot of that. Let's go back to our uh, trivia question. The last St. Mary's Gale to be named freshman of the year in the West Coast Conference. I don't have an answer. And it's not Thomas Sherry. No, nor Leroy Doss. No, Leroy Doss. No, Joe Gardier. Booker Newberry. Booker Newberry. And who yeah. could forget him? Going all the way back to 92. I was thinking of Jamoki Horton. Jamoki Horton? Actually, yeah, I was, was thinking good, of that one, but I don't know. You know that just, I didn't throw it out there. I think they just retired uh, Tom Sherry's jersey. Yeah, a couple of years ago. I mean, uh, I, I, I know so. what's happened. Tom going into the Bay Area Hall of Fame. Yeah, going into the Bay Area Hall, Hall of Fame. I remember Tom Sherry, of course, when put, made, you talk about the, the greatest player ever to play at St. Mary's, it was Tom. And uh, Tom Sherry out of Lowell High School in San Francisco with the great battles at Kizar Pavilion against Fred LaCour. You, you bet. <laughs> about seven people listening to us. Yeah, know <laughs> I know that. Well, you know what? I think there may be 12. You know what? I'll, I'll tell Michelle. you what. The guys that are playing college basketball nowadays, they should learn a little history about the game. You know, if you're at a school, why don't you find out who played before you? I, I think it's important. Know the history of well, a, a little bit about college basketball. Well, and Tom is such an innocuous guy, too. I mean, even as a player, he, 
wrote poetry and uh, was teaching school up in Truckee. Time, a shot clock violation with 5.9 remaining. So St. Mary's will have the last shot here. There are the retired jurors. How about Squirman Herman Wiedemeyer? I remember her number 11. Remember her? I had I had his number 11 when I was a kid. That's the one I used to wear all the time when I played football. And a candy man, Tom Candiotti, of course, baseball pitcher, played many years in the major leagues. Santa Clara now 13 turnovers. How about Angel Bravelli? Didn't he play football yes, here? I believe he did. I and think he did. Angelo Bravelli? Angelo, thank you. Angelo. Jim Bravelli would, would get on me for that one. Yes, Angelo Bravelli. Incident. The campus uh, it is very nice, situated in, the, in a nice area. And, and uh, you know what you have to do when you recruit at St. Mary's, get the guy on campus because once they're here, they see the beauty of it. You look at the WCC standings, and San Diego's made that big push. I mean, San Gonzaga with the two losses now. San Diego hovering, and they're hovering at 9-3. and three. USF now kind of getting in that first-round buy mode at 7-5. and five. Not a, Cannot win the league, but, uh, but I, I think... San Diego still has a chance. They do. No, and it's in their own hands. I mean, they play Gonzaga at San Diego next weekend. I, I would imagine there won't be a seat available for that one. No, probably not. No. And as you said, it's a, a tough arena on a visiting team. Brad Holland's done an excellent yeah. job. He's consistently done a pretty good job. Yeah, Brad's done a very good job over the years at San Diego. And the first half comes to an end, and Santa Clara closing the first half on a 10-2 run over the last five minutes and 45 seconds. What was an 18-18 tie now ends at the half, 28-20 for St. Mary's. 13 turnovers in the first half for Santa Clara, and I think that's probably uh, something that Dick Davey will talk to his players about. Jim Howell pretty much invisible in this game. He's got to get a wake-up call as well. At the half, we're coming back. Welcome back to the campus of St. Mary's College here in Moraga. And uh, you talked about what a beautiful scene it is here at uh, St. Mary's on a day like this, too. You think, wow, you know, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Yeah, it, it's a postcard day here in, in Moraga this afternoon. And uh, St. Mary's doing a good job in the first half, leading by eight. Santa Clara, I think, starting the second half now. Productive trip right here. Very important to set the tone in the second half. I mean, the Broncos only get 20 points in the first half. So they can't do that in the second half to expect to win. Same starting lineup for both teams. Well, I shouldn't say that. And he has started for St. Mary's. He's not in the ball game now. Cape Horn gets the start in the second half. He's normally the starter for St. Mary's. Other than that, same lineups for both teams. Howell down low over kicker. That's big. Well, that, that is real big because we know Jim Howell is, is a scorer. And uh, he puts up the goose egg in the first half. And well executed by the Broncos, and they needed that score. This is kicker down on the block, working on Leggy. Scramble for the ball. A good job that time by Ajawanu to get on that. St. Mary's will retain possession. Well, remember the last time down. Look at Howell on the baseline, and a, a good pass inside. He used a little bit of a body bump. But, but not enough for the official to feel there was a foul call. And he got himself a little bit of spacing there and able to finalize that shot. Kicker Leggy just comes right out to guard him. He's not going to give Kicker an inch. Well, that's the respect you get when, when, when you're the leading freshman scorer in the conference. Altimer picked St. John that time, but it would still be St. Mary's ball. Four on the shot clock, though. So St. Mary's got to get a shot off quickly here yeah and, and i'm sure they all recognize and make make sure that when you do get the ball whomever gets it's going to shoot it you're not going to have too much time to pass the ball got to shoot it okay point off the baseline could get a little hard how will rebound all right what worked the last time it may not be a bad idea to go right back at it again patrick good look couldn't finish 
Owl kept it alive, but Woodridge, Woodridge comes away with it for St. Mary's. Go ahead, let's go. Yeah, I think that shot will be there for Patrick if he takes a look on the interior. And if Howell is, is doubled up, he'll throw the ball back outside. Ajawanu, and they're going to save you four of the basket, I believe. Leggy, guilty of the foul. Non shooting foul. Second foul for Leggy. Ajuanu do, doing a good job of fending his defender off, and you saw Leggy with the, with the contact prior to the shot. So out of bounds, it goes with the Gales. With good motion and screening, and, and guys helping out for Santa Clara, going to get a trap. Yeah, second one on Cape Horn, and again, he just kind of shuffles the feet before he takes his first step. Yeah, I thought Rody did very good defense. He helped out inside. He ran to the outside to get to his man, and, and really was uh, disruptive out there and caused that turnover. So Santa Clara again with a set play coming down the floor. I, I'm sure they're going to try to go to Howell. The last shot, I, I thought, a bit quick by Patrick. Why not give Jim Howell a chance to set up low and see if he can find it? They're confronting him this time. Patrick throws something up. I'm not quite sure what that was, but my guess is it'll get him a seat on the bench fairly quickly. <laughs> well, Patrick's going to, and, and Dick Davey makes the call on the bench. That ball was tipped because it's hard to shoot it to the back of the basketball yes, okay. without somebody hitting the basketball. Then they do drop it down to Howell, and Howell draws the foul. And, and I think Kickert's doing everything he can inside to try to negate the ball from going around the goal. But uh, a good pass on the baseline. And I'm sure Dick Davey said at halftime, look, Jim Howell's got zero points. Now he's had a few touches, but not enough. So we're, we're going to go back to him and see if we can get back in this basketball game. Well, and he's a real physical player, and Kickert, Really, for his size, a guy who would, uh, I think, prefer to play a little bit away from the basket rather than down uh, where the real serious contact is down on the block. Howell, as you see, 14 points and five boards against USF on Friday and a loss. Howell right there for the rebound and put back. Yeah, that, that's a real mistake. Because Howell that time just instinctively ran at the ball. Nobody screened him out. Ajuwanu. Woodard. Ajuwanu again. Woodard's open. And Rody the rebound. And Santa Clara now. Chance to get right back here within two or one. Yeah, Santa Clara's coming out with, uh, with a little bit of fire in their eyes, and they've executed. Now, this goes down. Really gives him someone. There he is. What again. a rebound by oh. Howell and a reach in grab by Woodards. That's a great play by Howell. He's just tough. He, he is tough. Remember on this shot. Now here's the idea. Someone here has to screen him out. He just goes right down the middle. But look, there's no Gale on this shot that's jumping out on Howell. Look at nobody. It's a mistake. And, and nobody is screening him out. They're all going for the rebound and basic fundamentals. The first thing you've got to do is screen out the shooter so he doesn't get the, the, the rebound. Heads up play by Howell. All timer, force that shot up, won't go. And Sanders with a rebound for St. Mary's. St. John leaves it nicely for Ajuanu, and he's gonna draw the foul, and let's see who they get. Did they get Leggy? They did. Third on Leggy. Good ball movement, I, I thought that time. Uh, again in the open court, uh, trying to look for Ajiwano in, inside, and I think it was Leggy that came over the top to pick up the foul. Ajiwano, nice stroke at the free throw line. Now Neeson will come back, and Leggy will leave for Santa Clara. Well, Dick Davies got that rotation with uh, Neeson, Leggy, Howell, ro rotate his big guys inside, and Leggy on the bench with the three. So you know he will sit for, for at least four minutes. Ajuana gets them both, takes it back to a six-point lead. Always teaching, always trying to make corrections. 
got a young guy you want to make sure that you, he understands what's going on out there in order to establish good position Patrick behind a screen couldn't quite get it Neeson fights for the rebound gonna get a foul and let's see who they got might have gotten Ajuano I don't know Or are they just going to say out of well, bounds it, off of Ajuan? It, yeah, maybe no foul, but ball deflected out of bounds, uh, and, and the Gales were the ones that hit it. Now out of bounds, it goes to Santa Clara. Neeson working on Ajuan, got in the air, couldn't do much with it. It's going to be out of bounds to the Gales. Yeah, and Neeson, again, he could have been called for a foul there because the Gales are holding very good position. Ajuano again, establishing, not allowing anybody to penetrate on him, and, and he can have that position on the floor. Now, St. John had the big first half, so, so you don't want to forget about him. Make sure that he's proactive. Pretty good move here. Sure was. Wow, almost got that down. Sanders will go to the line. Very athletic, you can yeah. see that. Yeah, you can see Sanders. I mean, a young guy. But, but he has that quickness, you know, the, the first step and acrobatic in the air, almost made like a circus shot going to the goal, but will pick up a couple of free throws. Bagel in the first half. Third foul on Howell. So now Howell and Leggy both with three, and Dick Davies got a decision to make, and I think he's going to get Howell out of there. Yeah, remember when they had Howell out in the first half, uh, Randy Bennett and, and, and the Gales went right to kick it inside because now you've got a bit of a mismatch. Uh, you, you got Ajuano, you got Kickert on the floor. Santa Clara going smaller is going to have a harder time matching up with him. So now an eight point lead again for St. Mary's. This is Anderson. Now Rowie in the ballgame. Rowie's been very quiet. There's the other night. A nice play that time by Woodard. What a play. Ajuano will take it all away. Wow. What a play by Ajuano. Boy, it might be some bumping at the other end. They're going to get a double foul. Yeah, good idea. That's a nice call that time. Chuck Janelli stepping in there, and he's going to eliminate any problem before it starts. Yeah, away from the ball, and when it was on the ground, it all occurred during during that uh, loose ball situation when the Gales were able to co convert. This is again. We've seen this happen before, uh, and St. Mary's just doing a better job to get on the ground. Woodard's kind of get it going. Now he and Anderson, you go and look at the other end, get up, start bumping each other. The official right there with a double foul. Here's another look at it. That's what happens when it's on the ground. Get get on. young people watching when the ball's on the floor. Get after it. Then they got tangled up. Then they started bumping each other here. Official right away with the double foul. Yeah, and that was where he made the call right there too. It wasn't on the contact after the steal. So a timeout of the floor with 15.39, and now St. Mary's with its biggest lead of 10. Gales by 10 with 15.39 remaining. They don't miss out on the action at the 2003 West Coast Conference Basketball Championships. They take place at the Jenny Craig Pavilion in San Diego, the exciting 14-game men's and women's tournament, March 6th through the 10th. To reserve your prime tickets now, call 619-260-7550 or log on to WCC Sports. Dot com. Gonzaga and San Diego will play each other next weekend. That will be for the conference championship. First two teams, however, get a double bye. And then the battle is the next two teams. And, and it's interesting, Barry, too. After this game, uh, the Gales travel to Pepperdine and Loyola to finish the year. So, you know, they've got a chance if they can win out to secure that first round bye and end up in fourth place. Now, that would be big. Yeah, it'd be real big. It was Altimer at the other end with the basket for Santa Clara to cut the lead to eight, but a foul coming back this way. Yeah, remember, too, on the double foul, you don't go to the possession area. You go to the point of interruption, and uh, whomever had the ball, that's why Santa Clara retained possession on that double foul. Third foul on Neeson now, so all three Santa Clara big men with three fouls. And that could really become a factor. Yeah, a big factor. Ajuanu has been very good at the free throw line tonight, eight of nine. That 13. Altimer pulls the trigger right now, knocks it in for three. Bakari Altimer, we've seen him do that before. 
You know, he is a creator with the ball, and he made a big goal there. Santa Clara needs to stop. Boy, look at Ajuwano just calling for the ball. Yeah, and he's got plenty of space. Would have tried to give that time to Poole going to the basket. Another foul going to be called against Santa Clara. Grab. It's going to be the sixth team foul against Santa Clara. Terrific cross dribble on the last sequence by Bakary Alzheimer. He, he made that three, and the Gales come right back down the floor, get it on the interior, run a pretty good out of bounds play. Just can't finish. Sanders' little jump hook, it won't go. Rhodey fights for the rebound, bodies falling everywhere, and it's going to be St. Mary's ball. Seems like there's been an inordinate amount of loose balls in yeah. this game where bodies are just flying, just kind of getting after it. St. Mary's been a little bit quicker to the ball than Santa Clara this afternoon. See if the Broncos go zone. Looks like they're switching it up, going zone. St. John now might take a good look at it. Now 15 on the shot clock, plenty of time. St. John backs it out again. Woodard skip pass to Sanders. Sanders got himself in the air and lead for Woodard. Woodard to Ajuana. They got a nice pass on the interior by Woodard. Well, Woodard's presence of mind to get into the middle and just analyze, not get out of control, and, and make a beautiful pass in traffic. Rowe way downtown, he misses. Well, St. John took a little bit of a chance, but not a bad idea. Turnover, it's gonna be Santa Clara ball. Yeah, watch on the last possession. Woodard makes a beautiful pass. The ball's gonna go to Woodard. Let's roll it a little bit forward. Go ahead, go through. Now, now you're gonna bring it down and watch Woodard when he gets the ball here. Now Woodard's gonna utilize his dribble and just hit the man open inside and makes a beautiful pass here in traffic for the finish. So a nice play uh, on the interior by St. Mary's and Woodard's just made a great read. Needs to turn around with the left hand. This is off the left side, but Rowey runs it down, puts it up, gets it. Nice to see Rowey get a goal. Yeah, he's he, he, had a, he, he had a tough goal. Remember that last week in the, in the, in the Fox game last week uh, against Pepperdine had a tough game. And, and then one of nine against USF on Thursday night, Friday night. Now the Broncos trying to make a run at it here, down seven. Again, a nice pass by St. John. That's what set that up for Sanders going to the basket. Patrick standing, Jay gets it for three. Boy, Patrick, I mean, he, he is an offensive-minded player. Missed a couple of shots, but kept his confidence up and drilled a three. Back to a six-point ball game. I think the one thing the Broncos have to do is stop some penetration. I mean, uh, St. Mary's been able to get inside the last couple of times and, and end up with some easy goals. I think we've got an illegal screen. They got pool on that, I believe. Yeah, it may have been pool when you're when you're when you're setting your screens. It may have been either pool or her. It may have been her because her was the guy setting the screen for pool who was coming to the ball. And it was, in fact, her was first. Broncos doing a good job, I think, too, Barry, with Howell out of the game. Don't, don't forget, Jim Howell does have the three fouls. You look at that turnover story, a good, good job by Bakery all time at that time just to break it down and take it to the basket. Santa Clara's got the 14 turnovers, but uh, to my recollection, they had quite a few turnovers at halftime. I mean, they had they 13, had 13 of them at halftime. So uh, Dick Davies' team's gone through the second half with only one turnover in eight minutes. And Alzheimer cannot convert that. Howell going to come back into the lineup now for Dick Davey. Cape Horn comes back for St. Mary's. St. John gets a blow. Anderson leaves for Santa Clara. Sanders 
driving on Rhodey. Like Santa Clara's got the intensity up a bit. I mean, they're, they're seems like they're on the balls of their feet. They pick up a foul. They're almost out of steal. I mean, Neeson was close. If it's Neeson, it's a sport. Seventh team. And the fourth foul on Neeson, as you said. And Anderson will come into the ball game. This is Brad Anderson replacing Neeson. Look at St. Mary's in the future, Barry. You know, the nucleus of their team. You got a guy like Pools, a junior, kicker, uh, a freshman, Cape Horn, a sophomore, uh, her, a junior. So, you know, you've got some guys coming back. Ajiwano is, is another player, a junior. And the leading scorer from last year, Paul Marigny, has missed this season. And he's expected back next year as well. Covered not bare for Randy no, Bennett. Not, not bare at all. Cape Horn, they leave him. He takes it. Can't get it. Her right there, and he couldn't get it. So Santa Clara dodges a bullet right there. Rowie got it. Now Rowie's on fire. Yeah, Rowie's getting it going now. No, Rowie's a prolific three-point shooter. Santa Clara making a nice run, closing it to three. Crowd uh, getting into this game for the first time. It's a near sellout here, and the uh, crowd's been rather quiet this game. Her open, look out. Let's go. Anderson the rebound, bangs it off the pool, who saves it nicely for Ajuana. Ajuwano inside. He's got position. All he's got to do is turn and shoot it. Smaller man on it, too. And let's see who they got Ajuwano over the top, I think. Ajuwano has a 6 4 Anderson on him. And Santa Clara make a little run here. They trail by 3 10 21 remaining in the ballgame. 41 38. St. Mary's. The Gale with a pepper sticking out of his yeah, head. I like is. that. It's a nice touch. He's a post player. Three, <laughs> three point ball game right now. Let's go to Mark Hugh Jones. He's got a special guest. Mark? You got that right. I got former Stanford standout and now head coach of the Gales, Coach Vincent White. Coach, how you doing? And how's it feel to be back in the Bay? Oh, it's great. Great to be back here. Great to be at a great college like St. Mary's. Coach, I was wondering if you needed a new tight end. Well, you look like you can play, big fella. <laughs> no question now. <laughs> I don't miss anything, especially meals. <laughs> It's all right. We don't play at the tight end, though, so you may have a problem there. Okay. <laughs> back to you, Barry. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. Thanks to Vincent White. Vincent, uh, great running back at Stanford and has really become very good coach. Great offensive mind. He could do very well here. They run a little different system than they did here at St. Mary's in the past. Rowie, nice cut. Oh! Rowie wanted that one desperately. They'll go to the line. Now, interestingly enough, St. Gina was the the story for St. Mary's in the first half. Although, well, let's do this first, and we'll talk about St. John. Well, Barry, th this is an overplay. You're going to get the ball here on the outside. Watch the overplay, and then the back cut. Here's your over. Now, stop it here. Now you make that pass, and you're not getting any help because the flow of the game is going the other way. And that's actually a goal that should have been made. I mean, you get one inside, you're fouled, but still nicely executed by Santa Clara. And Roy got them both. So it's a 41-40 ball game midway through the second half. St. John has been very quiet. He had all his points in the first half. Anderson steps in front. Broncos chance to tie or take the lead. Isn't this a typical Santa Clara comeback? Yeah, and you is. know what? There's no quitting the Broncos. You know, you cannot relax. Here's that over-the-top pass. Good job defending that time. I thought they had it, though. Anderson just couldn't quite hang on to the pass. Now St. John's going to back it out. He has not taken a shot in the second half. You would think they, they could post up kicker being guarded by a smaller guy in Anderson who's very physical. But uh, I'm surprised that... Kickard hasn't gotten a little bit closer to the goal and see if he can get his back to the basket. 
course, that's probably not his real comfort area. He'd rather face up, but he did make one in the first half. Fourth foul on Leggy now. So, so Neeson with four, Leggy with four. Howell playing with three. Gets them both. It's a 43 to 40 ball game. Now don't forget, Santa Clara only had 20 points in the first half in 20 minutes, so they get 20 in the first 10 minutes of the second half and play much better basketball. This guy's been a difference, Rowie. Yes, Rowie's been a big difference. Brad Anderson drives baseline, drew the foul on Poole. Anderson and his twin brother Cord, the uh, only two seniors on the Santa Clara team. I think Santa Clara will obviously much improve with Kyle Bailey coming back next year also. So Anderson at the line. Rolls it in. Reminder to tune in tonight, Gilbert Arenas and the Golden State Warriors and Jason Terry and the Atlanta Hawks, couple of former Wildcats, Terry and Arenas. Both played in Arizona. You can catch all the action beginning at 6 right here on Fox Sports Net. The Warriors and the Hawks, your exclusive home for Warriors basketball. Pretty good players that, that Gilbert Arenas and Jason yeah. Terry. I remember that one year when, when Arizona won a national championship. But Jason Terry wasn't good enough to start. That's right. He came off the bench. St. Jean this time leaves nicely for Poole, and Poole couldn't finish. Woodard follows, he can't finish, and finally, Howell clears for Santa Clara. So again, a chance for the Broncos to take a lead. Very physical inside, uh, good defense again by the Broncos. Look at Howell, he wants it. They had him. They, they had him, but only for a split second, because a guy like Poole's doing a good job of getting his body in the way. Rody offense, he got him with the elbow, and I think that's the right call. That's the fourth on Rody. Yeah, Rory that time on the baseline, and you're gonna watch his left hand. Take a look, see what he does with his left hand. Well, he is pushing off. He's trying, he's trying to clear space, and, uh, and the official got him his fourth foul of the game. So the Broncos with a multitude of players with four fouls. Neeson with four, Leggy with four, Rory with four. They'll leave Rowe out there, at least for the moment. Good job by Howell. Got a hand on the ball. Here's Rowe again. Rowe leave it for Anderson, who couldn't hang on. Everything right. Just could hold on. I think Anderson got blocked out. I don't think the pass was, was that tough, but Anderson lost some vision in there, and then the ball got to him and just reacted a little bit late. If they try to drop 14 kicker down near the baseline, here's your mismatch right here if you can find him. You got a mismatch because he's being guarded by a smaller guy. You would think he'd be able to get the shot off. Yeah, he's got seven inches on the man guarding. Here it is right here. Now he's going to post up. All right, take a look. Oh, he was there. Oh, he was there twice. He was there once, and then Ajiwano passed the ball to the wing. Looked like he had him again. All time, we're going to be guilty of the foul on St. John. That'll put St. John at the line. And it'll be a double bonus situation. Third foul on uh, Alzheimer. Now, Barry, feeding the post is an art. You know, it looks easy because, you know, the guy's there, but all, you don't have much time to make that pass. And it has to be precise and reactionary. And once you give it a second thought, it's too late because the defense is adjusted. First part of the second half by St. John. St. Jean from Versailles. One of my favorite places. You've been there, I know you bet. So he gets it, we'll take a timeout. It's a three point lead for St. Mary's. Seven minutes, 49 seconds remaining to be played. Well, Danny, we mentioned earlier, it was senior day here, and the St. Mary's senior, Samuel St. Jean from Versailles, France, with his mom and dad, and there's Bill Inia. 
another of the seniors with uh, his mother and father and uh, Ross Benson who uh, is unable to play for the remainder of the season with that knee sprain and uh, a big loss of course uh, for Randy Bennett and uh, and an Anthony Woodards was the uh, fourth senior who was honored today in pregame ceremonies uh, kind of a nice touch here McKean Pavilion uh, we've always talked about the fact this could be a notorious home court yeah I think you know when, when you, you start you start gaining success here at St. Mary's. You, you remember the Ernie Kent days when he really had it rolling here. Uh, all of a sudden, you've got a small facility. The fans are right on top of you, and it becomes a very difficult place to play. So Santa Clara now down three. They haven't had the lead for a long time. Seven on the shot clock and a turnover. Good pressure, I thought, that time by the Gales. 18th turnover, just the fifth of the second half, though. But yeah. they've had two or three of them in the last couple of minutes. Right, they only had one turnover in the first 10 minutes of the second half. If they go back to 14, see, they got now, they had them before. Now just turn around and shoot. Just didn't finish. Nice flop by Anderson, good performance. I, I don't even think that, I, I think that St. Mary's might, might be making that a little bit harder than it is. Kicker, I don't even think has to do that. I think all he's got to do is turn around and, and get a good look at it. Because I don't think Anderson's going to bother his shot at all. He tried to get some contact, and I think threw him off. Now Howell down low, guarded by Kicker. Howard backs him down, gets it up over him too hard. Ajuan with the rebound. St. John, hard. Alzheimer comes out of there, one-on-one -on -one with St. John. Alzheimer all the way. And a foul on St. John. Yeah, Bakary Alzheimer tried to make something happen. Why not? May have tweaked his ankle uh, he as did, he got yeah. up. Took a hard fall. The St. John tried to do a good job of establishing position. But you see Alzheimer there with the cross dribble and said, look, I got a lane to the basket. Defender can be moving backwards, but the official felt he wasn't in real good position to pick up that charge. So, Bakary Alzheimer will go to the free throw line, try to get his team back within one. Time, not any kind of factor. 624, as you see. <laughs> Gotta make those. Santa Clara wants a 30-second timeout. You can see St. Mary's been at the free-throw line 24 times. Yep. made 18. Well, remember that graphic in the first half. Santa Clara had 13 fouls in the first half. 624 remaining. Three-point game. We'll be back. St. Mary's clinging to the lead. They lead by three with 624 left. More WCC basketball action coming your way on Spot Fox Sports Ooh. Net. It'll include a men's matchup. Two of the West Coast Conference top teams in a game that will be for first place, most likely Saturday at 6, Fox Northwest and Fox West presenting that one. Jason Keith with the San Diego Toreros and Mark Hughes, Gonzaga Bulldogs. Well, I tell you, that's going to be a heck of a game. I mean, a Gonzaga at San Diego. And as you said, everything can be on the line in terms of a championship in that one. One out of two for all-timer. It's a two-point ball game. Kicker not away from the basket now. Sanders. Woodards. He had that shot. Didn't take it. Yeah, he sure did. Coming off that double screen, he did have a shot. Not electing to take it. Try to get a better one. Shot clock's going to wind down now, so St. John may have to make something happen. Shot clock inside at 10, at 8. Got to recognize here. Woodards, 4, 3, 2, and Woodards gets the shot up. Banked it off the glass, and it'll be Santa Clara. Coming away with it. In retrospect, that, <laughs> that outside jumper may have been the one. Probably looked pretty good. Huh? Yeah, pretty looks good now with the shot clock winding down. So Santa Clara with a chance to tie or even take the lead here. Alzheimer in traffic drew the foul. He was a little out of control, I thought. Got Woodards on the foul. It's one fourth on Wooders. And one thing the Broncos will do when they use that dribble, drive, penetration, jump into you, try to get it up on the glass, is force the official to make a call because there's all kinds of contact going on. And I thought they've been consistent. They've been consistent on the offensive foul, and they call that. And uh, on that time there, it looked like a guy going to the basket. He was hit while taking it in. 
Alzheimer gets the first. It is a one-point ball game. Cape Horn coming back into the St. Mary's lineup. Woodards leaves with the four fouls. Alzheimer now with 16 in the ball game. Got them both. Tie game. Well, you got to give credit to Dick Davies Broncos. Nice pass that time down low, but Ajuano has it swatted out of bounds. Yeah, good job by Howell to drop down. Good game for Bakary Alzheimer. I mean, he's out of St. Elizabeth's High School in Oakland, so coming back here to, you know, I'm sure he's got a lot of uh, a lot of fans watching him play. I and mean, he's he's done a marvelous job this afternoon, doing a terrific effort trying to D up here against St. John. Kicker it out of Weber's Anderson right in his pocket. Loose ball this time. It's picked up by the Broncos. And Santa Clara well, with a chance now to do some damage and take the lead. Again, good ball movement, good motion, lots of passing, screening away, playing without the ball, tough shot. <laughs> Almost got it. Yeah, didn't I know. <laughs> You know, you think about it, and they're running all this motion, and uh, all time he gets the ball and hits, shoots a fadeaway. Well, it's worked so far. That one almost went down, but didn't. Now St. Mary's. And a block foul going to be called underneath this time on Anderson. Yeah, should be a double bonus. Third on Brad Anderson. It's a big game for St. Mary's. I mean, they, they've had a good year. I mean, they've really come up uh, from, from the nine wins they had last year, uh, doing a good job in the West Coast Conference, trying to win at home, get some momentum, finish the year in Los Angeles against Pepperdine and Loyola. Sanders missed the first free throw. He's only two of five, and he's 73% free throw shooter. Falls back though. You always talk about that. Yeah, I don't like it doesn't fall back. I don't like that 15 footer becoming a 17 footer. Roy comes back into the Santa Clara line of Patrick leaves. Roy, remember, playing with four fouls. So Dick Davies got all the shooters in the ball game. He brings Leggy back also with four fouls. He's got Rody, Roy, and Alzheimer all can shoot the ball from the perimeter. Santa Clara just setting those screens. I'm sure they'd love to end up with Howell inside and try to lob it to him. But I, I think the Gale's defending well. Tough shot. Sure is. Oh, he banked it in for three and one. And he made it. <laughs> well, exactly the way he played it. That was drawn up. Oh, yeah. That was that was exactly how you do it. You run a shot clock all the way down. You set a screen for Roy, and then as it's winding down, you foul him and bump him, and he, and he knocks it in. Thanks it in. <laughs> Dick, Dick Davies probably said, that's exactly how yeah, we, oh yeah. we teach that. And he's nonchalant, you know, not a smile, nothing. That's the way I played it. Four-point play for Roy, and Santa Clara leads by two. Yeah, if you ask Roy, he's going he's gonna to have had a lot of them that look good that didn't go down. <laughs> I get right. a gift there, but it all evens out. I'll take it, yeah. And a timeout call by Randy Bennett. So he wants to talk it over. His team trailing for the first time in a long time. 350 remaining in the ball game. Santa Clara 48 and St. Mary's 46. Rowey with 11 points. I believe all of them have come here in the second half yeah. and none bigger, of course, than that four point play. And, and you know, it's really nice to see Rowey uh, get going with, with, with some goals because he's had a couple of tough weeks. And, uh, you know, he's, he's not shot the ball well, but that made a nice effort there to to miraculously uh, make a big goal while being fouled and to complete that play. You know, you know, let me interrupt you for just a second. The officials are now saying that that was a two-point shot, not a three-point shot. So it's a three-point sequence for Rowley and not a four-point sequence. Yeah, and, and I think that the two-point goal is correct. It looked like to me that, you know, he's coming off that screen. It looked like he had a foot on the line. So they're going to make that a deuce, and, uh, and he'll complete the three-point play. But more importantly, Santa Clara now in good position. They've got the lead. Now they're going to try to defend, and uh, you take a look at Rowey. I mean, he's a very good three-point shooter. So it is a two-point lead. They changed that. 
before we gave her the last score, after we gave her the last score. First Santa Clara lead since it was seven to six. St. Jean takes it all the way too hard off the window and an offensive foul. Fourth on St. John. Well, Ethan Rohde had a good look at it, and, and when you drive down the middle in this game, someone will step in your way. And Rohde, again, good job to accept the charge. And with that, we'll jump away. 335 left. Ball game's there for either team. 48-46, Santa Clara. Well, Santa Clara leads for the first time since early in the ball game, and Brandon Rowey has everything to do with that. Well, it's been a big second half for Rowey, and uh, he's been opportunistic, looking for a shot. We know he's he's a very good shooter. So uh, once he got his confidence up, made a few shots, now he's been able to drill the three, makes an acrobatic circus shot here while being fouled, and it was a two-point goal. And I thought it was a good call. The left foot was definitely inside the line, but still uh, not the way he drew it up. He banked it in. He'll take it. He's got the 10 points. And uh, really has been the catalyst for the Broncos in the second half. Drop it down for Howell, and Howell gets it. Nice effort that time. Rohde got the ball exactly where he needed to. It's been a gutty performance by Santa Clara this afternoon. It really has. Really, you know, they, they were down and not out, but in the prone position, certainly, and got up off the floor and, and now enjoy a four-point lead. Howell and Rohde really have been the ones who've gotten it done in the second half. That's no basket grab foul before. Howell with six points all in the second half, but he's really been a factor. And Roy with the 10 all in the second half. And St. John to the foul line. Don't forget, he had a big first half. Had 15 in the first half. Not much in the second. Hasn't had a field goal in the second. Four points, or fourth foul, I should say, on Alzheimer. So now Alzheimer with four, Neeson with four, Roy with four, Leggy with four. Everybody with four. Yeah. It's <laughs> quite a few guys with four. Well, you got to remember the first time these two teams played in Santa Clara was a three-point game, 66-63, evenly matched. St. Jean now has 19 in the ball game. Rowe had a little lift that time. Now they leave it. Rohde open for three. Got it. Well, wasn't that a beautiful read by Brandon Rowe? Rowe to Rohde for the score. You just drive the baseline, find the open guy. Santa Clara now with confidence. I mean, they're, they're, now they're playing. They're not on that shakiness they had uh, at the start of the game, playing with a lot of confidence here as the game winds down. Ashawan who forced the shot up and drew the foul, and I think they're going to get a howl on this. Well, here, here's going to be the play. You're going to drive the baseline coming here. Now you're going to set up behind the line and make the bounce pass. Rowe to Rohde. Watch the bounce pad. Look, look at Rohde. Look at him back up to get behind the line. Just and they, you know they, they work on that. The guy dribbles down the floor. You don't stand there inside the line. Back up outside the line when you're a very good shooter and a tremendous read and a nice play. Rohde to Rohde for the goal. Ajuanu makes the first. He's 10 of 11 at the free throw line today. <laughs> Got a goal. Four of the five Santa Clara players on the floor now are playing with four fouls. Alzheimer, Leggy, Powell, and Rowe. Dick Davey just going to hope. Yeah, he's going to hope and just say, you know, let's just keep playing. But look at Rowe. I mean, he's just now proactive, just going to the goal and trying to make something happen. See if St. Mary's can get something here. Good play by Ajuano. Got the ball while on his back. He didn't roll over and passed ahead to keep possession for St. Mary's. So now the Gales with a chance to cut it to one or tie. St. John. Oh, got it. Big shot, wasn't it, Barry? Big, big goal. First field goal of the second half for St. John, but it was huge. Ties the game. He's got 22, we're at 135. Game got off to a slow start, but it's certainly picking up tempo. Yeah, it is. Leggy couldn't get it. How follows? No. And let's see. They got Rody, I believe. Yeah, they may get Rody with the foul. Hal had a gimme. 
Hal had that automatic tip inside. The ball just would not go down. Santa Clara converging on the interior, but not getting any result. Now here's the three-point goal. Here he is right here. Look at the pass and a nice look that time and, and a goal Sanders able to dish it and a beautiful read and a good pass by St. John. What a game by Sam St. John. He's got the 22 points, 7 of 10. They call that foul not on Rody but on Howell, and that will be his fifth, so he will have to leave. That That's a big loss, I think, for Santa Clara. Yeah, it, it's a big loss, and uh, Jim Howell only with the six points. A force inside has uh, played a productive second half for the Broncos, and now they're forced to go smaller, of course. So Sanders, who has struggled at the free throw line today, three of six at the line. Yeah, Jonathan Sand, Sand, he's got that slingshot, bring it on the side free throw, but it works for him. See, look, at it kind of kind of brings it away from himself. Not shooting his free throws effectively this afternoon, but has been good this year. So a one-point lead now for St. Mary's. Clock heading down toward the one-minute mark. Rory for three, a little quick. And it'll be out of bounds to St. Mary's with 102 remaining. Yeah, don't forget now, double bonus on each side. Santa Clara now down one. And St. Mary's just be effective, get a good shot, run your offense, be selective. Wouldn't be a bad idea to punch it inside. I mean, everybody on the floor for, for the Broncos in foul trouble, at least almost everybody. A little clear out here. Four down, one up. I think Randy Bennett's going to take a timeout. He just wanted to have a little bit of time elapse, take the timeout. You, you still have 20 seconds, 19 rather, on the 35. Got plenty of time coming back in. 45.8 seconds left in the game. St. Mary's with the ball and with the lead by one. Well, we've seen a lot of games like this in the last couple of weeks. Well, I think balance again. And, you know, the West Coast Conference, uh, and, and, you know, Randy Bennett talked about that before the game. He thinks that the recruiting's improving. That's what happens when you get a team like Gonzaga that all of a sudden is going to the NCAA tournament, winning the conference. You want to try to compete. Everybody getting better in this league. And I think the, the very bright future for the West Coast Conference. Randy Bennett talking about the bigs in the West Coast Conference. Yeah, a lot and he's of right. A lot of good bigs. Good, good big players. And, Here's your reset. You see the double bonus. You, you see the fools in the 30s. Uh, both clubs with timeouts left. Uh, Santa Clara still has a, a really a total of three timeouts. St. Mary's with two. I would think St. John's a guy you want to look at here. I mean, you know, he, he's been so active. Drops down into the corner. Now they got eight on the shot clock. Now they got to think about what they're going to do here. Six on the shot clock. Give it to St. John. Well, he didn't. Sanders in traffic couldn't get it. And St. John there he is. Now you got a foul. If, if you're Santa Clara, you got to make a foul. Oh, and he gets a steal. Oh. Right in our lap, he got a steal. And uh, Rowey just couldn't recover. I think they wanted to foul, and then Rowey saw a spot to come from behind and almost picked up a, a loose ball. I think I might have saved his life. Did you? What do you think? I Did might you? have, yeah. Could have been I, seriously you know what I, injured. I was waiting for you to <laughs> kind of get in the way and take a charge. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the first time. It I'll would be the first and last. <laughs> yeah. Take another look at this as uh, Rowey comes from behind and just couldn't quite catch up with it. He caught up with us, though. Yeah, he caught up with you, and uh, Tompkins there tried to he pushed off instead of establishing position. <laughs> exactly. I was moving. <laughs> 54 53 19 seconds left St. Mary ball so Santa Clara is going to have to take a foul here yeah they're going to have to take a foul and, and Dick Davey may employ the strategy that let's see we've got 19 seconds we may want to try to steal for three or four seconds and then go ahead and, and then create that foul you're looking at the standings right now and uh, what's yeah. important here is being in the top half yeah top half so you know St. Mary's wants to move up you want to be in that top half because you do get a first round bye if you finish one, two, three, or four. If you finish one or two, you get the double bye. But that looks like it's going to be Gonzaga and San Diego yeah, that, that will get that double bye. That's a gimme, I think, already. 
So again, we get a timeout. Now all the strategy starts, and both these coaches are very capable of strategizing. And you want to make sure now, if, if you're the Gales, and Randy Bennett's going to have good free throw shooters on the floor. The other thing that's a little scary if you're St. Mary's is you want to make sure you get the ball in bounds. You know, it sounds like a very simple maneuver, but in the clutch late in the game when teams are overplaying trying to steal, that is not the easiest thing to do. So be solid, set screens, don't set moving screens, make sure they're, they're stationary and get the ball in bounds. Then you know Santa Clara will come after you. Dick Davey has uh, taken the players that have four fouls out of the game with the exception of Leggy right now. And you know Dick Davey will, uh, after the foul is, is committed, he'll he'll make the, the, the substitution, get all-timer back in the game. Got a foul here. Got to make the a kicker, foul. And there's the foul, and it's Rohde who picks the foul up, and now Dick Davey will get Rowey back in, or get all-timer back in. <laughs> Kickert will go to the free throw line. Kickert, a very good free throw shooter at just about 79%. All right, now wholesale substitutions for both teams. And even if Kickert's able to get this one down, the Broncos down three with 18 seconds to go. That was Kickert, only his third point of the ball game. Came in here as the leading scorer. Leading scorer amongst freshmen in the West Coast Conference. See if Santa Clara goes timeout. I think he might go to timeout. So I think the mindset for the Broncos is three. And I think Randy Bennett saying to his guys, we're just going to play defense. We're not going to foul and try to keep the ball in front of you and try to harass on the outside. A little bit of pressure given to Altimer. Altimer guarded by St. John. Now they get it to Anderson on the high block. Anderson drives. I think you give him a two. Timeout. So I think you give him a two if you're if you're St. Mary's. Now Santa Clara's thinking there's still time. You got to make that quick foul. And we've seen teams go length of the floor with about four seconds to go and win games. Yes, we have. Saw it just last week in a game you and I did up in Logan, Utah. 4.6 seconds left. First half, the story really was St. Jean. Yeah, no, no question that, that he was the catalyst in the first half. And in the second half, Bakari, all-timer, I thought, made some critical goals to get Santa Clara back in it. But Ajiwanu, very tough inside for St. Mary's. And very effective at the free throw line, 11 of 12. And then Rowie to Rohde with a big shot right here. And this then remember this shot that uh, St. John able to get a good look at it. And that was, a, that was a big goal because that uh, tied the score for St. Mary's. So, been a well played, especially the second half. It's been a high level second half of both teams trying to find their way in the first half. Got to foul right away. Got to make it, it quick, yeah. Make it real quick. Maybe you can foul before the ball goes inbounds. Now they got to get it in and they'll call a timeout. <laughs> they almost did not get that in. Talk about getting the ball inbounds. Sometimes the toughest thing to do under pressure. So 30 second timeout well called because that was going to be a turnover. You remember the old rule when the count got the four you could yeah, not that's right. call. Well they changed that yeah. a long time ago. And the old rule was as soon as the referee gets the four you can't call a timeout. But uh, that, that's been and I think a good rule change there. I mean why not you got five seconds to put it in. If you call it at four you call it at four. So again I'm sure they will. Uh, Probably won't guard the inbounds pass, isn't that generally? What well, you're... generally, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's there's no reason uh, to guard the inbound. I think that's a good call. There's no reason to guard the inbound pass uh, unless you just want to be disruptive and maybe get a hand on it. So there's, you know, a couple of schools of thought on that. And and again, uh, Leggy's guarding the inbound. Leggy's a big guy. See, Leggy's thinking maybe I might be able to deflect the ball. Can't run the baseline. Now I got a foul. Oh, turn it over. And I got to hurry. Got to get a shot up. Got to get a shot up. How do you do? How do you like it? How do you like Santa Clara? They and come back another and steal, and they're going to win the ball game. We're going to get a travel here. Wait a minute. The official on this side, Chuck Ginelli, was calling travel, but he's saying no. Game it over. happened after the clock. How do you like that? They get the steal and have the presence because the clock was ticking to take it to the rack for the winning goal. Can you believe? 
that finish. I told you sometimes the toughest things to do is get the ball in bounds. It looked like Kickard had it, fumbled it. The Broncos find a way to get it. And in retrospect, if you're St. Mary's, just eat the ball going out of bounds. Do not throw it back in. And in this situation, you're better off just to go out of bounds because you throw it back in under the opposition's goal, and they get a chance to come back in and score and win the game. So, you know, young players sometimes make those kinds of mistakes. And I think it was Adagiwano in the corner that was the one that tried to save that ball. But better, just go ahead, go out of bounds. Yeah, that's one of those would and could and should have. Sure. Uh, Adagiwano was a hustle play. On it was part. a hustle you play. Can't, really argue with the intent of the play but uh, and if, and a play like that it's a bang bang kind of situation I'm sure there's not really time to think here's what I really want to do and uh, sure enough it was picked off and again I thought Santa Clara the presence of mind right. to they, advance the ball toward the basket and get it down yeah. with just under two seconds to play well actually when they got the ball it was about a three on zero I mean when Santa Clara got it all they, all, all they saw was was maroon shirts under the bat what a finish tough loss for for uh, Really a tough loss for St. Mary's because they, they were trying to get up to that four spot and, and they were not able to do it. But, you know, they go to L.A. I mean, stranger things that happened. They, they could finish seven and seven. Santa Clara actually still has a chance yeah, to move up there. All of a sudden, here come the Broncos. I, I mean, I think a lot of credit is due Dick Davey for what he's done with this team. Because in all candor, I mean, this is not a team with the greatest talent in the West Coast Conference. And, and he's won 13 games. He's plus 500. And, and I think, you know, if you put Kyle Bailey in the mix, you got an all-league player. And don't forget, they lost Steve Ross, who, who was another guy that was an all-conference player. So they took two players out of their all-league stature, and they've done a terrific job. But it was an outstanding game, tough loss for St. Mary's. Great comeback win for the Broncos. And credit where it's due is Cord Anderson with that last basket. So big day for Santa Clara, an even bigger finish for Sandy uh, for uh, Santa Clara as they win it by one. That's a wrap for us from here at the McCune Pavilion. 57-56 Santa Clara. For Dan Belwamini, I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.